online and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Well, the service that they're introducing there is, is um, minuscule to the services I provide. Shrugs, indifference, and not much effect on his bottom line. That's the feeling from one locksmith in Grand Forks as UND campus police now offer special services. Thanks for joining us tonight. The program has been utilized hundreds of times since introduced a few years ago. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric tells us how this benefits students in the Northern Valley. It's another frigid day in Grand Forks. So cold your car won't start. Or how about you've lost your keys in the snow? Just give these guys a call. I think just the other day we did 29 of them. The campus police administration decided to implement the program, unlocking your car and jump-starting it for free. Sergeant Weigel says it's one aspect of having that community policing mindset. So students are getting to know, you know, not just me, but they're also getting to know patrol officers that are just starting. They're getting to know our chief of police. They're getting to know everybody within our police department. The department says students are taking advantage of it, helping roughly 320 times with this program last year. Uh, I think it's a really handy program. Uh, I haven't had to use it yet, but it's nice to know that they would come and help you out if you need it. Another young woman I talked to said her friends all called over the weekend as below zero temps killed their car batteries. But how does this local government service compete against private industry? You know, most of those people also need keys. Uh, most sometimes they've lost their keys. Greg Barta says many times he'll still get called to the campus to unlock a car because the skills the police have are beginner at best. Barta says sometimes the cars are too new for the police, but it's not affecting his bottom line. An occasional car that they open, it matters none to me. And another locksmith I talked to said the same thing. It's not an issue for them. In Grand Forks, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. UND police say if they cannot get the car unlocked or jump started, they will call another agency to do it instead, then passing along the cost to the student or faculty member. Easy Locksmith costs 45 bucks for unlocking your car. Fargo police say they were unable to locate a man that hit a mailbox with a stolen car in South Fargo last night. At 9 p.m., police set up a perimeter in a large area extending from 13th Avenue South to the interstate and from 25th Street to University. Many of you have asked why there was such a large area blocked off and a manhunt over a stolen car. Fargo police say they don't typically pursue over stolen vehicles, but last night's incident brought concerns to officers, such as if the suspect were injured and if more severe crimes were committed. Police say it's standard protocol to have perimeters be larger. Although the man they were looking for was not a threat to the public, they say, some people have asked how to balance the importance of searching but not scaring the public. Well, we try to be as transparent as possible. We want to make sure that we are providing the public with as much police knowledge and police information as we can so that we are not uh, causing a panic, uh, an overreaction. Obviously, we, we rely on and we need the general public's help in finding and capturing people. Now, this is the second search for someone running for police in just two weeks. Earlier this month, Moorhead police say an officer tried to stop John Hamry for making an illegal turn, but Hamry took off on high speeds in a chase, and his car was later found abandoned in South Fargo. Hamry has been arrested and is in the Cass County Jail. Some afternoon light flurries had many of us wondering whether conditions were changing for the worse. This was the scene today in Fargo about an hour ago, and there's still some flurries throughout the area. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson to see if we should be expecting any more of this white stuff tonight. Hutch? Well, here's th the way things are shaping up on the radar as we head into the evening hours. Mike, most of our viewers in eastern North Dakota are seeing things wrap up as far as snowfall goes, but to the east is where we continue to see a dark blue or more moderate band of snowfall. Fall, reduced visibilities and well, kind of a re slipperying of the roads as this will coat the roads with about a half inch to an inch of snowfall. Becker County, northern Ottertail County seeing some flakes. This is Detroit Lakes north on 59 through White Earth and into Monoban County. Now it's just exiting Norman County, so another band that stretches all the way up toward Fertile is making its way east, but snow is ending again here in the Red River Valley of eastern North Dakota. So here in Fargo, steady temperatures 10 to 11 degrees, south winds. 
10 to 20 miles per hour. It'll be breezy, it'll be gray, but milder weather is on the way. We'll get to talk a little bit about that, and I'll have the outlook for the rest of our seven-day forecast here in just a moment. Can't wait for that. Slippery roads. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We have some new information for you from the Wilkin County Sheriff's Office. Two surveillance photos have been released of what investigators say could be the vehicle used in an armed robbery last week. The sheriff says that they're looking for a dark SUV, possibly blue, and believes it could be a Ford Expedition from the mid-2000s. The sheriff says a witness account led them to this vehicle. Investigators followed up and found the vehicle on video, leaving Rothsay at the time of the robbery. It happened just before 1.30 last Tuesday afternoon at the Farmer's State Bank in Rothsay. Officers say the suspect pointed a gun at the teller and demanded money. He then took off in a vehicle nearby. The sheriff says that they're looking for a white man, and you can see in the surveillance pictures that he was wearing a mask and a dark hooded sweatshirt with stripes on the front. Now, if you have any information, please contact the Wilkin County Sheriff's Office. Two men are behind bars after stealing a vehicle, an ATM, and running from police overnight. UND police officers were called to the Hilton Garden Inn around 3 a.m. for a burglary. Now, when officers arrived, they saw the men leaving and tried to stop the vehicle. The two men got out and ran, but both were quickly caught. Officers say these men, Daniel Gagno and Jeffrey Kahn, stole an ATM from inside the hotel and loaded into a vehicle they stole from a business in Grand Forks County. Both are facing charges of burglary, theft of property, and refusing to halt. Kahn is also facing a DUI and drug charge. UND police say they don't know how much money was in the ATM at the time. A lot of ATMs are owned by third-party companies, sure. so maybe, uh, you know, if you were to go to an ATM in maybe Hornbachers or Hugo's, a lot of the times those ATMs are maintained and owned by a third-party company. To take a look at the charges that these two are facing, head to valleynewslive.com and then click on this story. Police have identified the man who died from suspected carbon monoxide poisoning when ice fishing. They say four men were overcome by carbon monoxide poisoning inside a fish house. It happened on Leech Lake on Sunday. 34-year-old Jared Nels Johnson from Akeley, Minnesota, was found dead at the scene. Another man is still in the hospital. Two others were treated and released. An investigation shows that propane devices may have caused unsafe levels of carbon monoxide. The High Till Horse Ranch and Rescue out of Hawley, Minnesota, announced today it will stop all rescue operations by the end of the month. A post to their Facebook page says despite our best efforts, we're unable to gather enough support or assistance to continue to function. We first told you about Hightail Rescue after we were contacted on our whistleblower hotline by a woman who said a horse that was donated there died from what she says was lack of proper care. To read our past stories or the full Facebook post, head to valleynewslive.com and then click on this story. Some good news tonight concerning the 4th of July celebration at MSUM. There is an effort to bring it back after the school said it was no longer hosting the event. Moorhead Business Association Executive Director David Hunstead says they are getting close to the $40,000 goal. He cautions, though, they're not there yet. Crystal Sugar kicked off the fundraiser with a $10,000 pledge. Hunstead says since then many businesses of the community are promising to pitch in as well. Now, individual contributions are welcome. A GoFundMe page has been set up to handle those. People are upset about school lunch regulations, and many soon be getting some relief. An agreement reached in the Senate Agriculture Committee allows schools to serve 80% whole grain bread, down from 100%. That allows for leniency in schools struggling with product availability, as well as allowing for special exceptions for foods like white rice and tortillas. The agreement also pushes back the timetable for meeting low sodium requirements to 2019. Also, it would push the USDA to allow more a la carte options. That includes flexibility on whole grains and on sodium levels so that schools can provide food that students will eat, but at the same time make their budget. Now, this deal will be voted on by the full committee tomorrow before moving to the floor of the Senate. If you've been out driving along Interstate 29 in South Fargo and wondering what's going on out there, so are we. So we asked some questions. The southbound section of the interstate between roughly 32nd and 52nd Avenue South 
is down to one lane. Travel speeds are reduced there as well. And it looks as though a similar fate awaits northbound traffic. What we found out is that it's not the DOT getting a jump on spring road work. District engineer Bob Walton says that the city of Fargo is doing some soil borings as part of a flood control or flood protection project. It's Tuesday. That means tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, we will bring you another edition of Restaurant Report Card. Tune in tonight at 10. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood tells us which downtown Fargo restaurants need to clean up their act and which one is awarded our Clean Plate Award. Some local hockey players shared some great stories today with young students. Their stories later on Valley News Live at 6. Heading into our evening hours, we have flakes of snow that we're tracking, but temperatures are warming. 11, your high, and that's right now in Fargo. 13 right now in Jamestown, your high temperature, and a 10-degree day in Grand Forks. Warmer weather around the corner. Details are next.